underwater alien base. The ocean is a terrifying place filled with scary things. Of course, there are the realistic fears, terrifying sea creatures, the freezing cold water, and the impenetrable darkness. But one of the most horrifying things found underwater is a giant pyramid that UFO hunters believe to be an underwater alien base. As ridiculous as that sounds, just bear with me here for a minute. An alleged alien researcher apparently found evidence of this giant pyramid by using Google Maps. Now, all skeptics will laugh when a self-appointed investigator uses Google to find evidence of aliens. But seriously, what better tool is there for the modern UFO hunter? It was found off the coast of Mexico and apparently measures 8.5 miles 14 kilometers across its bottom. Some people are saying that even if it's not a base for UFOs to land while visiting our planet, it's still an enormous discovery. If it is indeed a pyramid, it would be the biggest the world has ever seen. And while it's easy to dismiss claims like this as nonsense, there's a bit of sense to the discovery. The biggest coincidence is that it was discovered off the coast of Mexico, near where there are many large Mayan and Aztec pyramids. It could be that there really was an ancient pyramid that was swallowed by the ocean thousands of years ago. However, it could just be a smudge on Google Maps. It could have been even a natural rock formation, with no explanation other than the shifting tectonic plates or a defunct underwater volcano. The truth is that nobody knows, and there have been no legitimate investigations to look into it since its original discovery in 2020. Too many volcanoes. Moving on to something that definitely exists, check out this terrifying discovery of underwater volcanoes off the coast of Tasmania. Volcanoes are scary for one reason. They shoot hot magma straight out of the mantle of our planet and into the air, where it can destroy settlements and kill humans. It's not something that anyone wants to experience. While mapping the sea floor about 250 miles 400 kilometers from the coast of Tasmania, scientists have uncovered what they're referring to as a volcanic lost world. It's a chain of volcanic seamounts that loom as tall as around 10,000 feet. To put that in perspective, these volcanoes are about six times larger than the Empire State Building. This is a completely unknown ocean ecosystem that has never been explored. The reason this discovery is so scary is that it reminds us that only 20% of the oceans of the world have been mapped and explored. Also, nobody wants a bunch of 10,000 foot, 3,000 meter tall volcanoes exploding underwater. I can't imagine that would be a good thing. It would devastate the local biome and hurt countless animals. According to NBC, the researchers also discovered an abundance of marine animals, such as whales, petrels, and other exceptional beasts of the sea. Skeleton Tea Party What's more terrifying than an underwater skeleton tea party? Basically nothing. Well, a man diving in the Colorado River near the border of Arizona and California reported to the La Paz County Sheriff's Office that he had discovered a pair of skeletons sitting in deck chairs and facing each other, with one of them wearing a pair of sunglasses. This is not really something any diver wants to find. Who put the skeletons there in the first place? Were they already dead when they were submerged in the lawn chairs? And where in the name of all that is holy did the skeleton get a pair of sunglasses? The county sheriff's office launched a hunt for these bodies, but they soon discovered that the skeletons were actually fake. It turned out the skeletons were set up for a film promotion. The skeletons had been kept in place because their chairs were tied to rocks and they weren't actually human skeletons. The police told local news sources they don't believe anyone was trying to scare anyone and there's no foul play to be investigated. It was simply a stunt for a movie. But it was good enough to fool the diver and the local sheriff, at least for a little while. What's the most exciting thing you've ever found underwater? Did you ever go fishing and turn up a bizarre and disturbing looking creature? Or perhaps you found human bones or something even more sinister? Tell me about your most shocking underwater adventure in the comments below. Then, remember to subscribe to Tall Tannic for more awesome videos just like this one. A human baby. A fisherman in New Zealand came upon something absolutely horrifying in the ocean. He'd been checking his fishing lines early in the morning when he saw something rise out of the water. It wasn't a legendary sea beast. At first, he thought it was a porcelain doll. Curious, the fisherman reached into the water and scooped the doll out, only to discover that the doll was actually alive and actually a human baby. However, the baby was so still and so pale that he looked to be made of porcelain. As you can imagine, this guy had no idea what to do. It's not every day that a fisherman finds a baby birthed from the sea. He quickly ran to the nearby holiday camp and informed the manager of the situation. The manager said that he only knew of one woman at the park who had a baby, and so they quickly ran to her tent and asked where her baby was. She'd been asleep at the time, and when she woke up with the camp manager asking about her baby, she realized that her baby was gone. It was her child that the fisherman had encountered bobbing out in the ocean. It looked like the child had woken up very early in the morning, escaped from the tent, and then ran out to the ocean by himself from the camping site. How exactly the baby survived long enough to be picked up by the fisherman is an absolute miracle, and the fact that the fisherman was there at all to spot the child was even more of a miracle. At the end of the day, the baby was perfectly healthy. 
mysterious ruins. In the Sea of Galilee, researchers and archaeologists have discovered a strange conical stone pile. That in itself isn't very scary until you figure out what it was used for. While some archaeologists at first assumed the ancient stone structure had been constructed as a fish nursery thousands of years ago, other scientists are claiming it's probably an ancient burial cairn. A researcher for the Israeli Antiques Authority told Live Science that the structure dates back at least 4,000 years. It was likely constructed at a time when sea levels were lower and was eventually flooded. If it wasn't built as a fish nursery, that means it was built as a burial marker. And that means somewhere even deeper are bodies. But how many bodies is anyone's guess. Could this be related to the giant biblical flood of the story of Noah? It's not terribly likely, but maybe explorers will find some evidence that shows the truth behind this mysterious stone and its purpose. The Brooklyn Subway Most of the things discovered underwater are ancient relics or scary sea monsters. But New Yorkers were shocked back in 2019 when they found a Brooklyn subway station completely flooded. This happened at the G-Train station on Broadway when water appeared to be literally flooding up from the staircase. As you can imagine, this isn't really something you want to see on your way to work in the morning. New York is dangerously close to the coast, and there have been rumors for years that within just one or two generations, New York will be completely underwater. If you were to stumble upon your local subway station flooded, you might think the end has already begun. Fortunately, the MTA came forward and said they actually flooded it on purpose to test their new flood prevention equipment. NBC New York reported that the MTA was testing a specialized flex gate that would allow a subway to be sealed off in the event of a large storm to prevent flooding. The New York City subway even tweeted, We're doing this because climate change is real. That in itself should be enugh to scare the pants off of you. Chained dugongs A terrifying and inhuman discovery was made in Indonesia by a couple of tourists. Divers were swimming near the small island of Kokoya when they happened upon a pair of dugongs, which are extremely rare and innocent sea creatures from the manatee family, chained up inside of underwater cages. The divers were obviously furious and they went to go demand answers. They found out that a local fisherman had trapped the dugongs there as a tourist attraction and was asking people for money to take photos of the animals. Obviously, this was absolutely horrendous. The sea creatures appeared to be a mother and her baby. They were separated in different cages, and judging by the horrible cuts and wounds all over them, they had been abused severely. Luckily, the tourist immediately left the fishermen and posted the videos all over social media, and a wildlife protection organization soon stepped up and released the creatures back into the wild. This is what happens when people are desperate to make a quick buck and have no moral compunction against harming animals. Don't support organizations or people who abuse animals or harm wildlife. Mysterious Horror Shark Divers in Switzerland found the most terrifying shark ever. But this story gets strange. The video online of the divers encountering the horrifying shark statue underwater has absolutely no information with it. Additionally, nobody's been able to find any information on the shark statue at all. The video appears legit enough. It doesn't seem to be faked in the least. But from what anyone can gather, the shark doesn't exist. The best explanation is that the statue was once a movie prop that got lost in the ocean. Someone has to swim out there and document this mysterious structure. The truth needs to be revealed. One thing is for certain, bumping into this statue in the murky depths would almost be scarier than bumping into a real shark. Just look at those teeth. The Gulper Reel Perhaps the most terrifying thing ever found underwater is the Gulper Reel. Well, maybe it's not the most terrifying animal ever, but it definitely deserves a spot on this list. This is a very freaky eel. It has a huge mouth that's larger than its body. Its mouth is also on a loose hinge, allowing the horrifying eel to swallow an animal much larger than itself. In fact, it's basically the underwater version of a pelican. Not much is known about this animal, as it lives roughly 6,000 feet beneath the surface of the ocean. There have been a few specimens found, but not nearly enough to do proper studying. Most of the images you'll find online will be artist illustrations and fuzzy photos of preserved specimens. Science clearly has a long way to go when it comes to documenting and understanding some of the rarer underwater wildlife out there. The good news is that you won't bump into one of these on your next diving adventure. Bodies of the Titanic In 2012, Photos were re-released that reminded the world of the devastating sinking of the Titanic back in 1912. After 100 years, the Titanic is still one of the most brutal accidents in history. And while there have been many expeditions down to the Titanic, there have never been any bodies found. Out of all the 1,500 people who were killed in the disaster, only 340 bodies were actually recovered directly after the ship sank. That means that somewhere lying among the debris, the wreckage, the shattered deck, the thousands of stray pieces of luggage are 1,160 bodies, or at least there used to be. These newest re-released images were taken in 2004 during a special exploration mission by Robert Ballard, the man who discovered the wreck in 1985. 
Lots of photographs were taken, and many of the more disturbing photos show evidence that there were definitely bodies scattered amongst the wreckage many years ago. For example, one image showed a pair of shoes very near to a tortoiseshell comb. This suggests that a victim had been lying there. So where did he and the rest of the unfortunate passengers go? Experts say that after 100 years, it's likely that animals under the sea ate the remains of the passengers. As sad as it is to say, there are probably no organic human remains left from the Titanic. All those bodies were eaten by crabs and lobsters. FW-190 Fighter Plane from the depths of the ocean near Norway, an amazing FW-190A3 fighter plane was recovered back in 2006. It has a pretty cool story behind it as well. Apparently, the aircraft had needed to make an emergency landing way back in 1943, and after the pilot was rescued, the aircraft sank to the bottom of the ocean. It sat there for around 70 years before it was finally recovered. And even though it was covered in ocean slime when it was brought out of the water, the ancient fighter plane was actually in pretty good shape. Sure, it couldn't fly, but if you spent a little bit of money on a cleaning crew and patched it up with a refurbished engine, you'd have a really sharp classic machine on your hands. The FW-190A3 was a German fighter aircraft designed in the 1930s and used quite a bit during the Second World War. In fact, the FW-190 and the BF-109 were the backbone of the German fighter force. There aren't very many of them left today in good condition, and this newest one pulled from the depths of the ocean is going to make a great addition to whichever museum it ends up in. The Creepy Sculpture Park there's nothing quite as disturbing as the underwater sculpture park in Granada. If you were unaware of the existence of the sculpture park and found yourself scuba diving in the area and you accidentally stumbled upon it, you'd probably have a heart attack. The creepy sculpture park is home to all kinds of weird concrete and steel structures, some of which weigh as much as 15 tons. All of them are held in place by bolts, with most of them on the bottom of the sea floor. In total, there are 75 sculptures here that can freak out even the bravest divers. It was first constructed in 2006 and is still in pretty good condition. Why would someone go to all the trouble of installing all that art down below the ocean waves? Artists are always doing things to upset traditional ideas, and this sure fits in with that image. Some of the more bizarre sculptures you can discover at this park include Christ of the Deep and something known as the Vicissitudes which is a sculpture of 26 children holding hands in a circle. Some people say this represents the circle of life, while other people say that the children are representative of the slaves that were thrown off of ships so many years ago. You can even find a guy hammering away at a typewriter in this strange park. No matter what you think about the art down there, it's guaranteed that you'll discover something you can enjoy. You might even see a turtle. The Titanic of the Mediterranean The MS Zenobia is known as the Titanic of the Mediterranean. It was once a grand ship but is now hidden underneath the waters off the coast of Cyprus. It was destined for a life as a ferry, and even though it was not as luxurious or as large as the Titanic, it was still pretty close. But the two things that both of these boats have in common is that they sank on their maiden voyages. When the MS Zenobia departed Sweden in May of 1980, the ship immediately experienced steering problems. There were absolutely no icebergs to blame for this accident. The issue was with something in the computer programming that controlled the ship. The crew realized that there would be nothing they could do, and so they ordered an evacuation the computer malfunction proved totally catastrophic. Just a few hours later, the entire ship sank. They should have done some better debugging. Today, you can find this boat about 140 feet, 40 meters below the surface. It's a popular spot for divers, and it's doubtful that any attempt will be made to rescue the vessel. If you're feeling particularly brave, you can penetrate the wreckage and head deep into the lower cargo decks to see what you can discover. The ship is 584 feet, so make sure you bring enough oxygen. Have you ever gone scuba diving? Where did you go? How deep did you swim? What did you discover? Tell me about your diving adventures in the comments below. Then be sure to subscribe to Tall Tanic for more amazing videos just like this one. The Lost City of Heraklion One of the coolest archaeological discoveries ever made was the Lost City of Heraklion. It was discovered off the coast of Alexandria in the north of Egypt, and it took years of searching just to find it. A French archaeologist and his team finally located the ruins of this ancient city after it had been lost for 2300 years. It's completely submerged and riddled with ruins and artifacts that would make your mouth water. There are 64 ships sunk amidst the old ruins of the city, including 700 anchors and an unbelievable treasure of gold coins. There are also statues standing at nearly 20 feet, 6 meters high. Oh, and don't forget the old temples. Back in its day, Heraklion would have been one of the greatest port cities in the world. 
and it would have controlled most of the trade going in and out of Egypt. But even though this was such a huge and prosperous city, it somehow ended up underwater. It's actually located very near to Cleopatra's legendary palace, which was also lost to the ocean thousands of years ago off the coast of Alexandria. While some scientists think it could have been earthquakes or rising sea levels that swallowed the city, the truth is that nobody knows how it ended up underwater. Could the legend of Heraklion be connected to the tale of the city of Atlantis? Humanity has seen numerous earth-shattering seismic events in our thousands of years here on Earth, so it's no surprise that we've created myths about cities being dragged under the waves. Heraklion is a real-life example of that. Shipwrecked Champagne Here's one for the wine lovers out there. Back in 2010, a crew of divers discovered 79 perfectly preserved bottles of champagne inside a shipwreck at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. While this in itself is a pretty cool discovery, it actually turned out to be very lucrative. Because the ancient champagne bottles from the shipwreck, which had been sitting at the bottom of the ocean for 170 years, had landed horizontally and stayed under intense pressure, surrounded by cold water and completely in the dark, they turned out to be still drinkable. That's why, two years after the discovery, 11 bottles of the champagne pulled from the old shipwreck were auctioned in Finland. According to the Huffington Post, the bottles fetched over $150,000. Imagine having a bottle of shipwrecked champagne and just pulling it out casually at a dinner party. Then again, just imagine having $150,000. There are so many things I'd spend $150,000 on before I bought a bottle of old alcohol. But then again, some people really enjoy having rare collectibles like these unique treasures. And if they have the money, I suppose they might as well enjoy it. Though, I'd feel pretty weird about drinking ancient beverages myself. Avro Aero Prototype In Canada, something very strange was found in Lake Ontario. According to Global News, search crews have discovered a test model of the original Avro Aero. If you're not sure exactly what that is, the Avro Aero was an advanced fighter jet designed in Canada and controversially destroyed in 1959. Basically, this thing shouldn't even exist. It was found using sonar imagery by a team of researchers who had set out with the express purpose of locating all nine models of the Avro Aero supposedly lost within the lake. They even used a submarine to scour the waters of Lake Ontario. If you're wondering how these prototype fighter jets ended up in the lake, it's because the models were launched from a military base in the 1950s very close to Lake Ontario. The Avro Aero was supposed to be a supersonic interceptor that could counter Soviet bombers. However, some test flights obviously didn't go very well. The jets fell into the lake and sunk to the bottom. Then when the project was scrapped and the government ordered all materials from the project destroyed, somebody probably thought it was a good idea to just leave the rest of them in the lake. Well, guess what? They've now been found. Ghost Fleet The ghost fleet of Truck Lagoon is cool and strange and amazing all at the same time. In this tropical underwater paradise, you'll find hundreds of pieces of wreckage from World War II. That's because for two full days in 1944, the Allied bombers rained death and destruction down on the beaches of the Caroline Islands in the South Pacific. Why? To destroy the Japanese Imperial Fleet, of course. It was basically the American revenge on the Japanese fleet for Pearl Harbor except a lot less sneaky. Even all these years later, the hundreds of Japanese aircraft and military vehicles destroyed during those two days of bombings are still sitting at the bottom of the lagoon. It's now considered to be the best World War II wreck dive site in the world. Of course, it was never technically lost, but it was definitely forgotten until the 1960s when Jacques Cousteau explored the wrecked lagoon for the first time since the war. There are an estimated 250 Japanese aircraft and 50 Japanese ships littered across the floor of the lagoon, and most of them are being rented out by fish and turtles. At least these hulking pieces of metal are being reclaimed by nature, the bones of giants. Yes, divers in Madagascar have discovered an extinct graveyard of giants. While this might sound like something from a bad Michael Bay movie, it's actually true. The divers explored three caves located at the edges of the island of Madagascar, and within the caves, they found the bones of giant lemurs that were the size of gorillas. They also found the bones of elephant birds that laid eggs 180 times larger than a standard chicken egg. These animals would have lived on the island of Madagascar right until humans showed up and hunted them to extinction. According to a paleontologist from the University of Massachusetts, the giant animals would have coexisted for a small time with humans. When Madagascar was first inhabited in 500 BC, the giant lemurs, giant birds, and other giant critters would have lived alongside humans. They only went extinct very recently. This also means that Madagascar was one of the last places on Earth where these mysterious prehistoric giants continued to roam unbothered by human civilizations. The idea of a human coexisting with a giant primate or a giant bird is totally unsettling. 
and our ancestors must have been courageous to handle their nerves going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these beasts. A UFO on the seabed. No exploration of amazing underwater discoveries would be complete without an unidentified flying object. And apparently, there's one sitting at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. It's being called the Baltic Sea Anomaly, and it's allegedly a UFO that crashed on the seabed. It was originally discovered in 2012, and since then it's been the source of much controversy. This is because some people say it's a spaceship over 140,000 years old, now crusted over by rock and other debris, and other people say it's actually just a rock, a rock that looks like a spaceship. The issue here is that it's at the bottom of the ocean. It's extremely difficult to properly investigate whatever's down there, and most science teams have to rely on using sonar. Even all these years after it was first found, there's still been no confirmation of what exactly the Baltic Sea Anomaly is. Until somebody goes down there and brushes away some of the dirt, we'll never know if it's a rock or in fact a spaceship from another dimension. Native American Burial Site off the coast of Florida, divers and archaeologists have uncovered an amazing Native American burial ground that dates back 7,000 years. It was first discovered in 2016 by an amateur diver who was looking for shark teeth. But rather than finding the teeth of a giant fish, the diver found the ancient jawbone of a human. Florida state officials are now calling this an unprecedented discovery. In the last few years, teams of professional archaeologists have been flocking to the site to see what they can find. So far, they found human bones, sharpened pieces of woods, and textile fragments. They believed the site was flooded several thousand years ago, but before that had been used as a graveyard for the original indigenous people who lived on the coast of Florida. Thankfully, the bodies of the buried will not be exhumed or disrespected. The highest priority now is to do as much research as possible while still honoring the resting places of the Native American people. Which of these discoveries surprised you the most? Yoda in the woods. Let's start the video with something absolutely shocking. A woman made an extremely unexpected discovery when she found a strange creature that looked a lot like Yoda from Star Wars skulking around her home. She managed to record the incident on video and post it online and it proceeded to freak out the entire internet. The woman said in a Facebook post that the strange creature was watching a group of deer nearby her home but that it would sometimes turn and stare straight at her. This happened in Minnesota and there's no doubt that the creature in this video definitely resembles some kind of Yoda lookalike. Could it be an alien? Could it just be an ordinary animal, or could it be some kind of an unidentified forest monster that nobody knows about? Unfortunately, the creature fled back into the forest and nobody has any idea what it was. It could have very well just been a cat, but the truth is that we'll probably never know. And besides, do you even want to know what the creature was? Crop Circles in California do aliens create crop circles? Are they truly responsible for this strange phenomenon? I mean, what other than an alien ship could come down and craft a geometrically perfect shape in a field overnight? This was the question asked when California residents woke up to a mysterious crop circle that had happened at a farm over the weekend. This was in Salinas Valley, near Monterey, and some claimed to have seen two massive explosions of light just before dawn the morning before the crop circle was discovered. The BBC originally reported the story in December, claiming that nobody had come forward to say that that they were responsible for the shapes flattened into the farmer's field. It definitely looked like the work of aliens. At least it did for about a week until the technology firm NVIDIA came out and said that they had created the crop circle as a stunt. The truth of this one definitely sucks. It would have been much cooler if aliens had created the crop circle rather than a technology company. But that just goes to show that most of the time, crop circles are not that mysterious, though we all definitely wish they were. Madayin Saleh Marayin Sali is one of the most fascinating archaeological sites in the world. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that according to UNESCO themselves is the first property ever to be inscribed in Saudi Arabia. The place was formerly known as Higra, and it was an ancient city located in the center of the Old World between Asia, Arabia, and Europe. It's also the biggest conserved site of the ancient civilization of the Nabataean south of Petra in Jordan. To look at photos, this place does not even look real. It looks like two interdimensional doorways carved into a random chunk of rock in the middle of an alien planet. Madayin Saleh features at least 50 inscriptions, many cave drawings, and monumental tombs that date from between the 1st century BC and the 1st century AD. In fact, this place is a unique monument to the Nabataean civilization with 111 monumental tombs. It's also just one of the least known wonders of any ancient civilization, even though it's just across the water from Egypt. To imagine the things that happened at this site over the last 4,000 years is truly boggling. Pufferfish Builders 
We already had one bogus crop circle on the list, but it's time to bring the subject back already. Only these crop circles have been appearing in the water off the coast of Australia, not in fields. They also are not crop circles at all, but strange ringed patterns in the sand that scientists have been confused over ever since the 1990s when they were first found off the coast of Japan. It took over two decades for scientists to figure out who or what was making these underwater designs in the sand. The answer is going to blow your socks off. According to a marine ecologist from the University of Western Australia, the bizarre underwater patterns are actually crafted by white-spotted pufferfish. It turns out that these are not underwater crop circles at all, but are actually nests dug out of the sand by pufferfish. Scientists are not quite sure why they do it, but it's definitely them. And yes, these are the same pufferfish that are extremely poisonous. Not only can the pufferfish kill you, but it's a better artist than you as well. Unexpected Alien Planet There's nothing more mysterious or unexpected than finding a new planet. Two veteran NASA missions whose goal it is to find new planets have recently discovered a world the size of Neptune circling a young star not far from us. The new planet is being called AU Mike B, which is honestly a pretty terrible name for a planet, but in any case, it's the behavior of its star that makes the planet so interesting. Its star is younger than ours and smaller, but for some reason it sends highly irradiated flares outwards into its cosmic neighborhood. The new planet is definitely not inhabitable, as it would be like living on Earth with our sun sending extremely powerful solar flares at us every other day. Or in other words, it would be like living inside a microwave set to random. Also so the planet is 32 light years away, a distance we probably will not get for another 1,000 years. However, this new planet and its volatile star are giving scientists a new and exciting look into the different type of solar systems located just a galactic stone throw from us. It's the first step to intergalactic exploration. The Mystery of Genghis Khan one of the greatest archaeological mysteries of all time is the location of Genghis Khan's burial place. It's believed that when the tomb is found, it will contain a ridiculous amount of treasure, and yet nobody has ever found it. According to legend, after the great king died, he was to be buried in secret. A special army carried his body home and killed anyone they encountered to hide their route. Then, when the emperor was laid to rest in the secret location, the soldiers rode 1,000 horses over the gravesite to destroy any trace of it. They did such a good job that in 800 years since Genghis Genghis Khan died, his tomb has remained a secret. Despite dozens of expeditions, not a single trace has been located. However, there is one clue. Folklore says that Genghis Khan was buried on a peak in the Kenti Mountains. However, scholars don't know where in the mountains he would be, and it's a pretty big region. Besides this, the Mongolian people don't actually want his tomb to be found. The great Khan wanted his burial place to remain a secret, and the people respect that. It's only the foreigners who come in and try to dig up the dead. The Amazon Sistine Chapel Let's move on to something that has actually been discovered, not just a total mystery. Although this newest discovery in Colombia is even more mysterious than the lost tomb of Genghis Khan, a massive collection of rock art has just been found, and it's being labeled as the Sistine Chapel of the Amazon. This collection of artwork goes back 13,000 years. It was recently discovered by researchers deep in the Colombian Amazon, and it depicts a forgotten art style from the indigenous people who lived in the jungle way before Europeans even knew that there was a jungle on the other side of the ocean. How many rock paintings were found, you ask? There were tens of thousands of them, each scribbled onto a cliff face in the middle of the jungle. Because of how big it is, experts were saying it could take generations to fully study the depictions and understand what they all mean and what they say about life 13,000 years ago. And remember, this is cave artwork made by the first people who ever lived in the jungle. Ever. New Sarcophagi Everyone loves a good sarcophagus find. There's nothing better than when researchers dig up even more mummies and tombs. And while you expect this kind of thing to happen in Egypt, a brand new collection of sarcophagi has been found in Turkey, and it was completely unexpected. The discovery was made during an operation to stop illegal excavations in the area. While the authorities were using surveillance technology to find looters, they actually found a previously unknown section of the ancient city of Aphrodisias, which is in fact the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Unfortunately, in all the excitement, the illegal excavators got away. But at least the authorities discovered two sarcophagi and a mysterious altar. It's unclear who exactly was buried inside the sarcophagi, but there was a depiction of Medusa found on one of the stone coffins. Could this be the actual sarcophagus of Medusa, the scorned woman from Greek mythology with snakes for hair? Initial estimates place the burials at least 2300 years ago, so really anything is possible. Ancient Cambodian City Everybody knows about Angkor Wat. It's the most impressive temple complex in the world and the biggest tourist attraction in Cambodia. 
It was also once the capital of the Khmer Empire, which ruled Southeast Asia from the 9th century to the 15th century. However, a new city has been discovered beneath the Cambodian jungle that for hundreds of years people thought was just a legend. As it turns out, the city of Mahendri Parvata is 100% real, and it was found buried beneath thick vegetation on a Cambodian mountain very near to Angkor Wat. This city is roughly 1,000 years old. Despite this, researchers told Live Science that it had some of the best city planning of any ancient capital in history. The entire city is laid out in a grid that must have been perfectly planned before the city was actually built. It showcases an advanced style of urban development and state control, plus highly advanced water management systems. However, the city was never completely finished, the waterways were never completed, and it does not look like people lived in the place for very long. It was eventually lost to the jungle and reclaimed by nature. ORCs ORCs are not what you think. It's actually an acronym for odd radio circles. They were first detected by scientists in September of 2019. An ORC is a strange cloud of radio emission hanging in space like a ghostly smoke ring. Nobody had ever seen anything like it previously, and guess what? There are a lot of them. They were spotted using a revolutionary new telescope in Australia while researchers were working to create an evolutionary map of the universe. The thing is that nobody knows what the strange smoky blobs hanging in space are. They're definitely not clouds of debris left behind by explosions, they have nothing to do with radial emissions from distant galaxies, and they appear to have nothing to do with any kind of gravitational field. Odd radio circles are so mysterious that researchers don't even have a clue. They could have something to do with fast radio bursts, like the WOW signal, but it's unlikely. Some people have even suggested that ORCs could be the throats of wormholes in space. As of now, scientists are baffled. Nazi Castle all across the world, there are incredible abandoned homes, but not all of them have pleasant pasts. One of the more nefarious abandoned homes is located in the Bahamas on a deserted island. It's known as Darby Island, and the home is actually a castle that was apparently owned by a Nazi sympathizer who built the 8,000 square foot castle in 1938. The owner of the castle had apparently been helping German submarines navigate their way by flashing lights from his rooftop during World War II. He also allowed them to take shelter inside of the cave network underneath his island. Besides just being a Nazi sympathizer, the British man who lived in the castle also owned a plantation on the island. But as for the man himself, nobody really knows what happened to him. His castle was ultimately abandoned sometime after the war, and to this day it sits as an ugly ruin on an otherwise beautiful piece of property. The home still has its original mahogany floors and furniture, and yet it seems that nobody is brave enough or rich enough to move in and make the place their own. It's also been reported that the previous owner's ghost still haunts the ruins of the castle even today. The House on Holland Island The last house on Holland Island was originally built in 1888. It stood on the island for well over a century, but was ultimately abandoned and then destroyed by the ocean. However, the story of this house is quite fascinating. Holland Island, which was located in the Chesapeake Bay, was originally settled in the 1600s and for nearly 200 years was a small and quiet colony settlement. By 1910, the island boasted about 360 residents and was a pretty bustling place. It had 70 structures, a post office, and even a church. The island even had its very own doctor and its own baseball team. Unfortunately, the island had a composition of mud instead of rock. This proved to be a disaster when Holland Island began to vanish in 1914. Almost all the residents were forced to tear down their homes in the following years and relocate to the mainland. But a few people stayed behind. The very last house was eventually abandoned, and it eventually became the sole house on the tiny island, which shrunk to such a small size that it could barely even hold this one structure. In 1995, someone bought the decrepit and abandoned house for a massive amount of money and spent 15 years trying to stop the water from claiming it. Unfortunately, he lost an estimated $150,000 trying to do this, and by 2010, the house had collapsed. It just goes to show you that building a permanent habitat on a muddy outcropping in the middle of the water is not the best way to ensure a sturdy living situation. Cape Romano Dome Houses The Cape Romano Dome Homes were constructed in Florida back in 1981. 
They were built on a small island group south of Marco Island and were accessible only by water. The homes were supposed to be ultra-modern vacation properties, but they ended up being a complete disaster and the source for many conspiracy theories. Some people believe that a secret alien cult had once lived in the Space Age buildings, but they were in fact constructed by a retired oil producer as self-sufficient properties. The domed roofs were designed to siphon the water into troughs to be used for showering and washing dishes. Unfortunately, there were no alien cultists living in the dome homes. There was nobody living in the dome homes at all. They quickly became unlivable because of the Florida weather being unpredictable, and then the sea began to rise and make them too dangerous to stay in. The only reason they're still around today is because of the strong concrete pillars that keep them elevated just slightly above the water level. There's basically no chance of saving the buildings now, and the abandoned dome homes are currently home to nothing but wildlife and mysteries. These are just another example of how rising sea levels are creating strange abandoned relics far out in the middle of the ocean where people used to be able to live. Perhaps someday, people will be saying the same things about Miami Beach or various low-lying Pacific Islands, too. Tom Kelly's Bottle House Tom Kelly's Bottle House is one strange place. It also happens to be located in one of the weirdest ghost towns in the United States. The home can be found in Rhyolite, Nevada, which happens to be filled with bottle houses. Three such structures were made by embedding glass bottles into the mortar to create strange and yet artistic homes. They have long since been deserted, but they're still standing in the strange abandoned town. The most famous bottle house was built by Tom Kelly. Around 1905, Kelly found himself out west searching for gold. He was also looking to build a home. He decided to set up shop in the mining camp of Rhyolite. But rather than build his home out of lumber, he decided to go with beer bottles instead. Considering there were about 50 saloons open in town at the time, Kelly easily collected around 50,000 beer bottles in under six months and built a three-room house with them. It even had a porch built out of glass bottles. Unfortunately, Kelly never lived in the house he had built. He instead sold the house, and then he died. The new owner of the house ended up abandoning it in 1920 when the gold boom was over and Rhyolite was deserted. The Dr. Seuss House who would have thought the most peculiar abandoned home in the world would be located in Alaska? It's known by the locals as the Dr. Seuss House, and it's easily one of the most fascinating architectural wonders in the United States. According to Unusual Places, the original owner worked on the house for at least 10 years before dying abruptly. The bizarre house then went abandoned for over 10 years until a new owner purchased it and began with renovations. But as you can see from the photos, the house was never finished. There are no windows installed on the building, and you can see the thin paper still nailed over the wood framing to keep the wind out. It's unclear why the house has never been finished. It's completely abandoned, even though it's sitting on private property. The only way you can see it legally is by driving past it or taking photos from an airplane flying overhead. Redmond Treehouse the Redmond Treehouse is another crazy creation that appears to be wanted by nobody. It looks like the mansion of a fabled pirate king who finally cashed in his treasure. The house is located in Washington, and it apparently belongs to a dad who built it for his kids. However, as is common with dads, it took too long to build and his kids all grew up before they could ever play in it. The treehouse is truly fantastic, built mostly from plywood. It's on the edge of a lake and has three stories and its own moat. A closer look will show that the house is clearly in some pretty rough shape. The dad who built it had some idea of architecture, but constructed his masterpiece out of scraps of wood and old fencing. Still, it's definitely a treehouse that would make Robinson Crusoe proud. Villa in Rural Japan there is an absolutely fascinating villa abandoned and neglected in the middle of rural Japan. Abandoned homes aren't uncommon to find in this country, but western villas are extremely rare. It was apparently a wealthy politician's house at one point, but was abandoned for unknown reasons and left to decay. Considering Japan has a very different housing market than the United States or other countries, the otherwise impressive home is an undesirable piece of property that nobody has any interest in. According to a report from the Tokyo Times, the villa was constructed in 1922 and is one of the only pieces of Europe that can be found in the rice fields and minimalist wooden structures of the Japanese countryside. Unfortunately, this magical villa is horribly decayed. The ground floor is coming apart, there is an unidentified beast rotting near the entrance, and inside the home is an eerie time capsule filled with old dolls and relics of the people who lived in the house almost 100 years ago. The personal items are still there, including an ancient TV and radio that may have been the first models ever released. Still, this is one of the coolest abandoned homes in all of East Asia. Futuro Houses 
The Futuro houses were prefabricated UFOs designed in the 1960s. These homes were made to look just like flying saucers and there were about 100 of them manufactured up until 1973. Some have been destroyed throughout the years, but there are about 64 of them still remaining. What's truly fascinating is that they have spread across the world. It's unclear how exactly this happened, but after the Finnish architect designed and produced the UFO houses, they ended up being shipped all over the planet. Back in the 60s, a single Futuro house cost $14,000. They can now be found abandoned in random places from California to New Zealand and from Australia to Europe. There is even one of them sitting somewhere in Japan, completely abandoned with nobody living in it. Plus, there are two of them hiding somewhere in the ice of Antarctica. Can you imagine living in one of these? It would be a totally surreal blast from the past. Marion Coffin Gardens the mansion at the Marion Coffin Gardens is one of the most spectacular abandoned houses ever. It's hidden behind the high stone walls of the gardens, and it has been mostly overrun by trees and weeds, but it's still a pretty amazing place. The mansion was originally constructed in the 1840s and was later expanded in the 1900s by Marion Coffin, who was one of the first female landscape architects in the US. Unfortunately, the owner of the estate did not care about gardens, and by the time he died in 1990, they had become unkempt and quite frankly dangerous. Then, after the owner of the mansion died, the entire place became abandoned. It wasn't until some preservation organizers got involved that the garden got a nice trim and the mansion was stopped from completely crumbling into ruins. You can now visit the garden and behold the amazing sculptures, fountains, and iron gates throughout the property. Haha ha Tonka Castle the Haha ha Tonka Castle in Missouri is probably the most overlooked tourist destination in the state. It's an amazing European castle sitting in the middle of an American state park with a strange and mysterious pass. The castle sits on a bluff overlooking a small lake. It was originally built by a businessman who wanted his own slice of a fairy tale kingdom. It was his dream to erect a castle inspired by European fairy tales in his beloved state of Missouri. This person purchased 5,000 acres of land, including his own lake, and he began work on the castle in 1905. He even had stonemasons from Europe imported to make sure the style was correct. Unfortunately, the businessman died in a car accident in 1906. To make things worse, he died in one of the first car accidents ever in the state of Missouri. And while the businessman never got to see his castle come to life, his sons continued to work on it for him. They managed to complete the design by 1920. One of the guy's sons took up residence in the castle, but eventually the money ran out, there was a lawsuit over the land rights, and the son was banished, causing the estate to be abandoned. Then in 1942, the building was completely destroyed by a fire and the legacy of the family was turned to ash. But don't worry, you can still see the remnants of this incredible abode on your next trip to Missouri. The Rhino Vehicle The Rhino Vehicle is one of the strangest things ever invented and then abandoned. It was allegedly crafted by a Greek-American inventor who had already amassed a fortune by coming up with other random and clever inventions. The Rhino was an amphibious vehicle designed with the intention of patrolling and defending the roadless wastelands of both Alaska and Canada. The vehicle weighed 5 tons, it was four-wheel drive, and it could reach speeds of up to 45 miles per hour. The most impressive feature of the Rhino was its collection of wheels. Each wheel weighed 1,500 pounds, and their spherical shape gave the vehicle superior all-terrain capability. Abilities. Could you imagine rolling around on a set of four globe-shaped tires? That would be absolutely breathtaking. You would have the coolest car in town. Unfortunately, only one prototype was ever built. The United States military did not wish to purchase any rhinos, mostly because the wheels were easily punctured by gunfire and the vehicle would sink. For that reason, no more of these bizarre rhino machines were ever built and the entire idea was abandoned. Nobody has any idea where that prototype is, but it's safe to say it's probably rusting away in the garage of the inventor. What's the wildest car you've ever driven? Have you ever gotten behind the wheel of a military Humvee? Or perhaps just a super expensive luxury car? Or did you ever try out a performance race car? Tell me about your best and craziest driving experiences in the comments below. But after you do, remember to subscribe to Taltanic if you haven't already for more awesome videos just like this one. Russian Military Vehicle in the Swamp 
It's been said that if you dig deep enough through the Russian wilderness, you will stumble upon any number of crazy Soviet machines, even leftover engines, from space launches. That's exactly how one man on an ATV stumbled upon a bizarre eight-wheeled vehicle in the middle of the Russian forest. What was once a muddy swamp had become exceptionally dry one season, and this enabled the man to take his ATV deeper than he usually would while out riding. After crossing a boundary of rusted barbed wire, the unnamed man came upon what appeared to be an abandoned military vehicle from the Cold War. But not just one vehicle, there were actually quite a few of them. The vehicles he found appeared to have been heavy trucks likely used by the Soviet army in transporting ballistic missiles. It's unclear why the vehicles were abandoned and left in the middle of a swamp, but it's safe to say that nobody is going out there to fetch them anytime soon. They're already rusted beyond repair and are of no more use to anyone but their history must be impressive. I wonder if they were used as part of a missile defense system, or if they were part of military exercises anticipating a possible World War III. The possibilities are endless, and only the Russian military archives have the true answer. For the local who discovered the vehicles, it wasn't even that surprising. It was just another day in the vast and mostly empty Russian wilderness. Plane on Tanks Somewhere in Afghanistan, an airplane was discovered sitting on a pair of tanks. This is a totally bizarre image, and it was apparently taken at the USSR Red Army Graveyard east of Kabul. It's unclear how exactly the airplane came to be sitting on the tanks, nor how on earth anyone got it on top of them, but it's clearly been there for a while. The airplane is littered with graffiti, someone wrote live free or die on the tail, and it does not look like it's in any condition to fly. What in the world is it doing here? It's hard to tell what type of airplane it is, though it looks like an old Cold War era transport plane. As for the tanks, it's basically impossible to identify them. Only their tracks are visible beneath the airplane, making you wonder if the tops are buried inside the belly of the great aerial beast, or if the treads are somehow part of the airplane. This must be some type of relic from a long time ago sitting outside a US military base. It's so strange though. School Bus in Lava Hawaii is full of some really amazing sights. They have amazing oceans, great surfing, and some pretty outstanding volcanoes. After all, the islands of Hawaii are basically made from volcanic rock, but you might be surprised to find a school bus completely trapped inside a lava field. It's one of the most bizarre abandoned vehicles you'll ever see. It was likely buried in a 1988 lava flow, which occurred after Hawaii's Kilauea volcano began erupting in 1983 and did not stop for 30 years. The lava reached all the way to the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park visitor center, which was set aflame by molten lava in June of 1989. It would have been a little before this that the bus in the photographs was engulfed by that same lava flow, just as it was burning in the community of Kalapana. Nobody knows who abandoned the bus or why it wasn't driven to safety, but it now stands as a grim reminder of just how quickly and deadly the volcanoes of Hawaii can become, and how rapidly they can destroy entire communities. Soviet Jet Train the Soviet jet train is one of the coolest pieces of abandoned technology in the world. It was developed during the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union. In the 1960s, everyone wanted to make locomotives faster and cheaper. One of the more insane ideas was to add jet engines to a train to propel it forward at blinding speeds that a gas turbine or coal-powered train just could not match. The first jet train developed by the Soviet Union was intended to speed up the daily commute from between Omsk and Tomsk, a brisk distance of only 550 miles. In 1970, Russian scientists got to work. A pair of turbojet engines were added to the front of a train, and in 1971, the first test was conducted. Instead of going 225 miles per hour like they wanted, the train only went 116 miles per hour, 185 kilometers an hour. Even after pushing the engine to its limits, the very max that they ever reached was 100. 155 miles per hour, 250 kilometers an hour. It was a total disaster. The train was also too loud and too costly, and most people were afraid to travel at such incredible speeds. The project was discontinued and the train was abandoned. It's currently sitting in the weeds, rusting away somewhere in an unknown location in Russia. TSS Duke of Lancaster the TSS Duke of Lancaster is a mysterious abandoned vessel with a colorful history. It served as a railway steamer, later as a car ferry, for a brief period as an arcade, and then it was ultimately abandoned. The vessel started life in 1955, and believe it or not, it looks a whole lot more interesting today than it did when it was brand new. It has been sitting beached on the shore of Wales since 1979, decaying and completely abandoned. On board, you can find coin-operated gaming machines that were moved onto the vessel in 2012 by a company hoping 
hoping to turn the large boat into a game center for kids, but the reason it looks so great now is because graffiti artists got a hold of the boat and had their way with it. And rather than scrawling all over the boat with graffiti, they actually turned the Duke of Lancaster into a gorgeous mural with some very cool pieces. Instead of just being a boring rusted ship, probably full of ghosts, it's now an impressive piece of artwork. Corsair Plane Wreck the Corsair plane wreck is one of the most ghoulish and mysterious abandoned vehicles currently sitting beneath the surface of the ocean. The wreckage is located off the coast of Oahe and is now serving as an artificial reef, but this was never intentional. It all began in 1948 when the World War II aircraft began to sputter during a routine mission. The engine started to fail, and so the pilot made a smooth water landing with the wheels up and the flaps extended. The plane wasn't even damaged during the crash. Unfortunately, the plane was not able to float. The pilot had no choice but to abandon in his precious aircraft and watch it sink to the bottom of the ocean. The wreckage is now sitting 115 feet 35 meters below the surface in an area with strong currents and a lot of sea life. The only way for divers to reach the craft is by descending using an anchor line and then swimming at least 30 feet 9 meters to the spot of the wreckage. While the story of the airplane's abandonment is not that phenomenal, the shape of the plane now is quite remarkable. If you have the chance to visit it off the coast of Hawaii, it would make for an incredible vacation. Reeves Octo Auto. Some vehicles are abandoned because of unfortunate situations, others are abandoned because they were horrible ideas. The Reeves Octo Auto falls into the category of the latter. This unusual vehicle was crafted by a man named Milton Reeves after taking a 1910 Overland and adding a new axle to each end. He thereby gave the vehicle eight wheels instead of four. Reeves claimed that all those extra wheels would make the vehicle safer and more durable. Unfortunately, absolutely nobody was interested in purchasing the vehicle. Even after Reeves removed two of the wheels to make the car shorter and renamed it the Sexto Auto, people still had no interest. This is unfortunate because Reeves apparently had even more plans to make even more vehicles with even more wheels, but nobody wanted anything to do with his weird contraptions. The idea, along with all the prototypes, were abandoned and never seen from again. The only thing Reeves went on to invent that we still use today is the exhaust muffler, so at least one of his inventions turned out to be useful in the end. The Waterman Aerobile The Waterman Aerobile was the very first true flying car crafted by an American citizen. The vehicle had no tail, it only had one engine, and it was designed to be a car that drove in the clouds. The first prototype was built in the 1930s, but it took a few different tries before Waldo Waterman finally got it right. In 1935, the W4 was built. It was a model plane designed by Waterman himself that looked like a car but only worked in the sky. After his success, Waterman went on to develop a drivable road version. He made a new aerobile dubbed the W5 that could be driven on any ordinary road while also being able to tackle the sky. The wings and propeller could be detached quickly and then reassembled so that the car could go from road to air in just a few minutes. Unfortunately, the idea never really took off. Even after successful test drives and several prototypes, including newer versions that worked even better, nobody wanted to order any of Waterman's flying cars, and they were all abandoned or destroyed. It's unclear whether some outside entity was trying to stifle the development of flying cars or if people in the 1930s simply were not ready for them. But the real question is, if a flying car could be developed, tested, and driven in the 1930s, why couldn't it happen right now? The Murmansk the Murmansk is one of the most notable abandoned wrecks in Europe. The Murmansk is a Russian cruiser crafted in 1955. It was also one of the latest gun cruisers to be decommissioned back in 1987. The vessel was then sold in 1994 to India to be scrapped, but that's when everything went wrong. The Murmansk wasn't exactly abandoned. It was lost. The ship somehow ended up running aground off the coast of a small Norwegian village instead of touching down in India. Then instead of rescuing the ship, which at the time had been in perfect condition, it was simply left to pollute the ocean and become an eyesore for the local Norwegians. There were some talks about trying to tow the ship away, but it eventually rusted to such a point where it was unable to be moved. It took 20 years for any kind of action to be taken to dismantle and get rid of this abandoned vessel. As of 2013, the abandoned Murmansk battleship that had mysteriously washed up in Norway was finally taken apart and destroyed. If you could choose one of these vehicles to be delivered straight to your driveway, which would you prefer, and would you even have room for it? The Zodiac Stone of Dendera 
One of the most spectacular discoveries that scientists can't explain is the Zodiac Stone of Dendera. This stone comes from ancient Egypt and was taken from the roof of the legendary Temple of Hathor. Within the stone slab, there are 36 spirits around the circumference which are believed to represent the 360 days of the Egyptian calendar. Deeper within the Zodiac Stone, there are the symbols of the Zodiac, most of which you would recognize today. But seeing as this artifact is ancient Egyptian, there are some Zodiac symbols that you definitely wouldn't recognize, such as the hippopotamus goddess, the great bear, and the constellation of the dragon. But many scientists believe this stone is one of the first examples of the zodiac ever to be used. Between its original discovery hundreds of years ago and the astrology pages of your local newspaper, a few things have changed. The zodiac stone of Dendero was transported to France in 1821, according to the official Louvre website. But rather than being interpreted as a giant horoscope, it was used in ancient times as a map of the sky. The Egyptians simply added a bit of artistic flair by creating effigies for the different months. The Zodiac Stone shows a distinct mixture of Egyptian, Greek, Roman, and even Babylonian astrological theories. When exactly the design of this slab of stone was transformed into the type of Zodiac map we use today is still unknown. Unexplained Radio Beam Astronomers in 2020 identified a strange radio beam that they have never been able to explain. Astronomers discovered the most realistic candidate ever for an alien signal. Researchers working at the Breakthrough Listen Project found the strange beam of radio light being sent to us from our nearest neighboring star system. The star is known as Proxima Centauri, and according to the report from New Science, the researchers who discovered the signal don't have any idea what it is. They are saying that it's the closest thing to an alien signal that humans have ever discovered, even more likely than the infamous WOW signal. If you're wondering how exactly they discovered this signal and what it is, it happened at the Parkes Observatory in Australia while the team examined data from a recent search for stellar flares coming from the Proxima Centauri. What they found instead were strange signals that sounded a lot like extraterrestrial beacons. There appeared to be some sort of algorithm within the signals that researchers claimed could perhaps be from an intelligent technology, something like a satellite. There was an additional signal that went on for a full three hours and was concentrated in such a narrow range of wavelength that it almost seemed as if somebody sent a direct beam of information to our planet. Unfortunately, some of the researchers say that it could just be some sort of radio interference from technology on Earth rather than incidental contact with an alien civilization. But then again, we simply don't know. Nobody can decode the radio signal, nobody has any idea what it means, and it came from 4.2 light years away, near a star that has at least two planets in its orbit. What do you think would happen if we actually did encounter aliens? Would Earth be invaded? Would we be able to fight off the extraterrestrials? Or could we coexist in peace? Tell me what you think in the comments section below, then be sure to subscribe to Taltanic for more awesome videos just like this one. A Parallel Universe Speaking of crazy science, bizarre particles observed during an experiment in Antarctica have led researchers to believe that there could be an alternate reality where everything is backwards. It sounds totally insane, but listen to this. The experiment involved giant balloons with a collection of antennas floating over the Antarctic ice scanning for high-energy particles from space. What the experiment discovered instead was that there were particles exploding out of the ground not being sent from space at all. This went down back in 2016. Since then, scientists have been poring over this bizarre data trying to make sense of it. How are all these high-energy particle bursts being emitted from the ground? The only theory that has really taken root is one that has left those who study physics baffled. To explain the origin of the signals detected during the experiment, scientists have put forth that there could be an upside-down universe created at the exact same time as our own, except that it's going in the wrong direction. It's a mirror world of ours parallel to our own existence, but everything is running backwards. It's a strange theory, and one that will make your brain explode if you think about it too hard. Extraordinary Nails New archaeological evidence is bringing back one of the most controversial ideas in the world. Two iron nails from ancient Rome have been discovered in an unmarked box that had been delivered mysteriously to Tel Aviv University in Israel. Some people now believe that these iron nails were the nails lost from the tomb of the Jewish priest Caiaphas, who supposedly presided over the death of Jesus Christ. Basically, new evidence is saying that these nails were actually used to crucify Jesus on the cross. But as you can imagine, this type of discovery is not without its controversy. Scientists don't completely know what to make of these iron nails. Slivers of wood and bone have been found on the nails, suggesting they had indeed been used in a crucifixion. 
The lead researchers from the project even came out and said that the nails are not 100% proof that Jesus of Nazareth was crucified in Jerusalem in 33 AD, but that they had definitely been used to crucify someone. The biggest issue is that nobody knows where the nails came from. According to the Israel Antiquities Authority, they were likely excavated from a tomb in the 1970s, but this was many years before Caiaphas's tomb was discovered. There are definitely some inconsistencies in the story, and unfortunately, until a time machine is developed, we'll probably never know the truth of what really happened with these mysterious nails. The Far Side of the Moon The moon is not a very large place. It's a pretty small hunk of rock circulating around our Earth, but that has not stopped all kinds of strange and unexplainable discoveries from being made on its dull gray surface. For example, the Chang'e 4 lunar rover from China recently discovered a mysterious gel substance while exploring the far side of the moon. The rover's mission was immediately abandoned so that the Chinese scientists could focus on trying to determine the origins of the unbelievable material. This all went down while the rover was cruising through an area with a lot of small impact craters. It then randomly stumbled upon a tiny crater that contained the bizarre goop. Apparently, the slime has an unusual color and could have been created from a meteorite hitting the surface of the moon and melting into a glass-like gel substance. However, it could also be some kind of slime monster eager to take over the planet and eat all of our brains. That's probably not the case, but just to be sure, we probably should not be bringing back any extraterrestrial goo that we find on the moon. To this day, scientists still are not sure what the oddly colored stuff was or how it got there. Africa and Alabama Perhaps one of the strangest discoveries from recent memory was back when scientists discovered what they claimed to be a slab of Africa wedged underneath Alabama. If this sounds completely ridiculous, that's because it is. But it's probably true nonetheless. The Times even did a story on it. Geologists reportedly found the chunk of Africa still stuck under the American continent over 250 million years after the two pieces of land had separated. According to the geologists from the study, the piece of Africa probably got stuck during a tectonic collision back when Africa and America were still part of a supercontinent. But you're probably wondering how the piece of land could even be identified as Africa. It doesn't make any kind of sense, but it was able to be identified because of unusual magnetic readings from below the surface of the Earth. It's not actually that complex. By studying these weird magnetic readings, geologists were able to determine that a large portion of the rock deep beneath Alabama and other parts of the southeastern United States was once part of Africa. They determined this by looking at the density and the age of the rock. To understand this a little better, think about America and Africa like different pieces of stone. 250 million years ago, the two pieces of stone were fused together, but then they exploded apart and a piece of Africa got left behind inside of America, almost like scar tissue. What exactly that means for the scientific community is still a bit of a mystery. Void in the Pyramid Nothing has baffled scientists for longer than the Great Pyramid of Giza. And one of the strangest things that scientists still can't figure out are the voids within the pyramid. Everyone knows that there's a massive king's chamber and queen's chamber located within the megalithic structure. Most people also know that there are shafts and passageways deep inside the pyramid that nobody can see from outside. However, almost nobody knows that there is a massive void in the center of the pyramid and scientists aren't sure what's in it or how to find out. Scientists don't even know if there is anything of value inside the void. It was only discovered after Japanese and French scientists checked for density changes inside the large rock structure using advanced machines. According to a report from the BBC, two voids were discovered using this method, the biggest of which is located just above the Grand Gallery. The big mystery here is that nobody knows what is inside the void. There's no way to reach it. The only way to get into the void would be to break the pyramid open like an egg and take a look. Some experts are saying that the cavity might not even be a chamber, but simply an empty compartment that had been incorporated by the builders to keep the overall structure from collapsing. Then again, it could be a secret chamber filled with unspeakable treasures and unholy curses. Earthquake Lights Earthquake lights are some of the strangest phenomena on the planet. To this day, scientists have no idea what causes them. Earthquake lights are strange flashes that appear in the sky when there is a tectonic disaster. To simplify it, when there is an earthquake or a volcanic eruption, strange lights can often be seen hovering in the sky like UFOs. The lights sometimes look similar to the aurora borealis, a kind of neon wave that ripples across the sky. The phenomenon is not understood by scientists, reported sightings are vague at best, and nobody has any idea if they're even real. One of the first sightings of earthquake lights happened during the 869 Sanriku earthquake in Japan. 
There have been countless reports of earthquake lights since, as recently as 2018 when blinking lights were seen during the 8.2 magnitude earthquake in Mexico City. Lights were also seen during April of 2011 when the Sakurajima volcano exploded in Japan. They were witnessed in 2007 in Peru, in 2003 in Mexico, in 2016 in New England, and scientists can't even begin to explain why. Naga Fireballs if you're familiar with the Mekong River, the mighty body of water that flows through much of Southeast Asia, you'll know it's one of the most beautiful places on Earth. And in a land where miracles and heavenly forces are things to be reckoned with, Naga fireballs have a special place in the local lore. Specifically in Northeast Thailand, where Naga fireballs are seen as flaming orbs breathed forth by a fearsome river serpent from Buddhist lore. It's basically the Loch Ness Monster of Thailand, and it apparently breathes fire. But what's really strange about this is that there have been countless witnesses of fireballs exploding from the surface of the Mekong River. It's a fact that this actually happens, and while it's almost certainly not the breath of a fearsome Naga, scientists don't know what it is. The stories are definitely enchanting, and countless people have seen the fiery balls of light spewing out of the river, but it's a complete anomaly that scientists cannot explain. The only relatively sane theory is that the fireballs are the result of methane gas bubbling from the bottom of the Mekong River and the concentration of UV radiation from the sun along with the heightened gravitational pull causes the methane leaving the riverbed to catch fire because of unstable levels of oxygen. That's a lot to swallow, but it's the best theory that scientists have to explain these mysterious fireballs. Ancient Cold Case there's nothing more exciting than a cold case murder file. But what about a case so cold that it's 430,000 years old? All we know about this case is that the cause of death was blunt force trauma and it happened nearly half a million years ago. The victim's identity is unknown and we do not have any suspects. According to the report from Live Science, what archaeologists do know is that the murder victim had their head bashed in. This is the oldest cold case ever unveiled to the world. Archaeologists first discovered the victim's skull inside of a bone pit in Spain. Judging by the wounds visible at the top of the cranium, archaeologists are saying that another human likely killed this person either with a spear or with a hand axe. It looks like our ancient ancestors had some serious anger problems. The site of this discovery is known as the Pit of Bones, and it's a place where researchers discovered the skeletal remains of at least 28 people. To this day, scientists don't know why so many bodies were buried in the same pit, but they have speculated that it could be one of the oldest graveyards in the world. As for the unfortunate victim, no murder weapon has been found, and it's unlikely that any arrests will be made considering the murderer is almost certainly a skeleton by now, and has been for a long time. Do you have any explanations for these startling discoveries? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Be sure to come back soon for another amazing video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.